You, you know, speaking of tuners, it's we get a lot of um, you know with with the uh, the loss of MFJ. There's companies that are you know developing automatic tuners. Of course, LDG's been doing it for years, and some of these Chinese auto tuners are flooding the shores. But oh, look, what yeah. we're really what we're really missing is a good, honest manual tuner like. The, yeah, the MFJ Versa tuner. Do, yeah, no one needs to do R and D on it. We all know yeah. the values, right? Yeah, it's yeah. N it's not rocket science. You can source the parts anywhere. So why why mm -hmm. isn't someone making them? I know, I know. You know, um, the variable inductance. You know, it's the you yeah. can and and a, and a um and, and and a capacitor. You know, variable the capacitor or, or tap. Caps, yeah. yeah, tap tap tapped inductance. Um, wow. Coil and then a variable capacitor and, and man, you, you, that's 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 the Versa tuner. <laughs> it's not <the> right, <laughs> right. Uh, and I think some of the Versa tuners had a nine to one ballon in it that you could just attach a piece of wire or a um, or a ladder line to the back. Yes, yes, they did. You could because mm -hmm. they they had both a coaxial and a um, and an open feed four hundred fifty ohm open feed yes. port. So. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you, I mean, a couple of years ago with the uh, antenna weekend, that's what I did. I just put a piece of wire in the back of my, my manual tuner and I ran that yeah. all weekend. Yeah. So, and even then, I don't even think it was about a measured amount of wire. I think I just had something left over from a job and like, oh, it's on a spool. Great. I'm going to use that. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. Again, yeah. It's, 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 we look at all these charts, and everyone has this thing, and we have these books and everything. And sometimes, just throw some wire up in the air, like you just don't care. Yeah, but a good, but a good tuner to go with that is yeah. just would it 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 that's it's it's it then it then it becomes magic, and those manual tuners, yeah, like because. Um, like Abdul says, um, auto tune is easier. Too many used ones on the market. Well. Today there are there's maybe too many used on the market that and we can talk about the limitations of auto tuners. I mean, sometimes you tell it to you know the auto tuner to make a match and it goes helter skelter, but you know you're limited to what um, fifteen hundred ohms, two thousand well, yeah, ohms. You, you know, there used to be three to one, three, three, to, one, three to one, three to one for an hour. and. Yesu, um, ICOM, all their internal tuners were three, one or best. Nowadays, mm -hmm. it's ten to one or more in some situations. For an um, auto tuner, yeah, right. But, I'm thinking but, like but, I'm thinking like the G90. The internal yeah. tuner on that old tuna wet noodle. Yeah, but I digress. You know, I, I think the but, same thing with SDG, LDG, <laughs> everyone else's. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But you know, it's the, the things you can do with a manual tuner um, are just beyond some of the, sometimes the auto tuner's capabilities because you know it's it's the difference between well the a stick shift and a auto transmission. Right. Uh, you know, it's um, auto is auto is cool because I don't have don't have to think. But um, boy, it's fun playing with them gears. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Until that transmission goes out the night the night before field day. Field day. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so, um, Brent said something too about. Um, I wanted to catch this here. MFJ still. I don't think the MF. I think MFJ has got a back stock of a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of new old stock still available. Um, no one, well, I even read something not too long over the past few weeks that no one's even responding at F MFJ anymore. Yeah. So they may be done, done. But um, I wonder if, like, the um, the ham radio outlets and stuff, they have all the back stock. They could. I was at, you know, the last time I was at HRO was back in February, and they still had a stack of Versa, you know, 948s. Um sitting on the shelves so mm -hmm. but today that could be different i don't know if there's right. any available or not anymore um you can buy them at ham fests you know i i recommend i always tell people that um you go into a ham fest look for a clean yeah versa tuner 948 
D or E, you know, one of the later later models, and um, and buy it. You know, yeah. don't haggle with the guy. You know, it, it should be it should be in the neighbor it should be in the neighborhood of about fifty to ninety dollars. Yeah. Um, speaking speaking of which, so many years ago, many 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 years ago, <laughs> Michael Michael should remember this because he's involved. Um, I was not able to go to a local ham fest and Michael went and he calls me at like 7 45 in the morning. Hey, there's a guy here with a Vectronics tuner, which is one of the little tuner. travel tuners. Yeah. It's a, it's a big one, but it had the cross needle and everything. Yeah. Yep. I want it. And I said, uh, is the Pope Catholic? Yes. <laughs> it was 20 bucks. It was 20 bucks. Right. 20 and he bucks. says, I'll, I'll spot you to 20. I'll pick it up. Just pay me. <laughs> Anyways, I used it for a year. And then there was another fellow in the club, our club, uh, older guy, and he needed a tuner and I lent it mm -hmm. to him. And this is probably going on seven, eight years ago that I lent it to. I went over there, got everything set up for him. So I was out of town a couple weekends ago. My wife calls me. And she says, some woman came over here and brought you a radio. Women bringing me radios? <laughs> no. But then I came home and it was tuner to come to find out the gentleman that had borrowed it, he was going into a nursing home. Oh. Like, oh. No. But he remembered to ask her to bring me it back. I had given up on it. I, I said, you know, I uh, my thought was, I should go over there at least just check in on him, see how he's doing. I knew he was mm -hmm. getting old up there in age. Uh, but the fact that he remembered to have her bring it back to me, that kind of just like, warms my heart. I got nice. young guys that have taken stuff and I've never seen it again. <laughs> but this fella, you know, who's in it well into his 80s, remember to bring it back. So that, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was at a point where I was like, I'm going to go find HT and find out which which nursing home he's in so he can at least get on the air at, in the oh, yeah. Day, sitting around. Uh, but I haven't been able to find out where he's at yet. But um, but anyway, so yeah, I got the I got the old Vectronics back now. But All I right. don't need it. So I don't know. Gotta, someone, yeah. might get, someone might get a yeah, free well, one. There'll be a, there'll be a ham that needs a manual tuner. So. Absolutely. Yeah, especially <laughs> a cross needle one. The cross needle ones are the best. Yeah. Yep. An absolutely. HT with a tuner. <laughs> if you need a tuner with your HT, something's wrong. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you really screwed up the antenna. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to grab a quick one here and then we're almost to the bottom of the hour, but, um, uh, shoot the pilgrim with an elevated whip. Must the counterpoise also be elevated? Yes. The counterpoise has to be all elevated. Um, the old for, so your vertical whip antennas can be, can operate in two different ways. When they're at ground level, you can use ground base, radials and then the radials almost become non-resonant you know the length really doesn't matter a whole lot what matters more is the number you have spread out it's once you start plane. it's a ground plane it's a ground plane and um once you start as you elevate that vertical element it becomes the ground becomes less effective for you so you have to elevate your counterpoise your radials but once you elevate your radials, now they are no longer non-resonant. They have to be. They have to be tuned to the particular fre frequency or band that you're operating on. So right. Yep. So like the the Poda performer, mm -hmm. you have to make that resonance. Yep. Same thing with like the buddy stick. You mm -hmm. have to those have to be resonant. So if you have a buddy stick or a Poda performer, the easiest thing you do is you can just take like little pieces of colored uh, electrical tape. And mark your lengths. Yep. Right. And that makes it super easy for setup and tear down. Then you can you can get to those you can get to those magic spots super easy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I've when we first started doing the magic carpet a couple of years ago, I'd have people that were their their antennas were up on a tripod, two three feet up into the air, and they say it's not working for me. It's not working for me. You know, they've got the Faraday cloth or the screen laying on the ground, and it's well, yeah. The reason it's not working is that you're you know because of that because of that distance between the two, you're just totally decoupled from ground. So right. it has to, you gotta, you gotta get down, you know, six inches ground level is the closer, the closer, the better. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, then it's, um, then it, then it's working. So 
Right. And the vice versa is true is that, you know, those with the uh, antennas on a tripod then have the counterpoise laying on the ground and that doesn't work either. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. So elevated, elevated whip, elevated radials, mm -hmm. ground mounted whip, non resonant radials. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.